Hi, this is Johan Sopnil Bhartia and we are here at QCon and Cloud Con in Paris. And today we have with us Jurassi Crowling, Principal Engineer at Grafana Labs. Jurassi, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me here. Of course, we cover Grafana Labs on a regular basis. But since we are at the show, it's a good idea to just remind viewers what is Grafana Labs all about from the context of the show. So Grafana Labs um, is a company providing observability solutions or open and composable observability solutions. Um, and for, for KubeCon, for this event here, um, we have a lot to talk about, like eBPF, open telemetry, and, um, and observing cloud native uh, workloads. Yes. I want to talk about observability in general, you know, because a lot of things, a lot of things overlap. We are looking at CLC landscape, a lot of projects are there, vendor sprawl is there, project sprawl is there. So let's just look at observability. Today, in 2024, March, what problem is our observability solving and how it has evolved? We have a, a big problem with observability today where, uh, well, and the problems we had yesterday were around vendor lock-in, right? So if you wanted to observe a specific service, if you wanted to monitor our services, uh, we would have to adopt a vendor-specific agent or instrument our applications using vendor-specific instrumentation APIs. Um, this causes a problem when we want to move out of those uh, uh, vendors uh, because we then have to re-instrument our applications. We have perhaps to redeploy our applications and re-architect our deployment uh, pipelines and so on and so forth. Um, so the problem that we had before and we are trying to solve with OpenTelemetry is um, um, commoditizing observability. So the tooling around the instrumentation, collection, and exporting of uh, telemetry data. Can you also talk about how open telemetry has evolved, and if you can also share some milestones that it has touched yeah, here. Absolutely. So open telemetry is a union of two um, competing and complementary projects. So back then in 2017, 2018, we had open census and open tracing. So I come from a tracing background. I was a year maintainer back then and an uh, open tracing co uh, contributor. And uh, we noticed that um, tracing is not the easiest technology to, uh, to understand. Uh, and it was even more confusing to people wanting to adopt telemetry um, uh, distributed tracing because uh, there were so many solutions like open should I use open tracing to instrument my applications or open census? How do I send this data? What is the Jaeger's point in there? Um, and uh, so we, we realized that to make it, users were getting confused and we were getting um, a it wasn't doing us any favor in having a fragmented community. So Open Tracing and Open Census then decided to join forces, and as a result of that, we have Open uh, Telemetry. Now, Open Telemetry, when we look today, we can see still the things that came from Open Tracing and Open Census. So if we look at the Open Telemetry Collector, for instance, we can see that it was the, the good old Open Census service, right? So people from uh, those, those days can remember the, uh, the Open Census service, and that still is alive with Open Telemetry Collector. On the other hand, we have the specs, and the specs they were uh, a part of the of the the goals for Open Tracing. Open Tracing aimed to be a standard for distributed tracing, so it established a specification, it established semantic conventions, and so on and so forth, and that is inherited by Open Telemetry. It is enhanced now because uh, we are not only talking about uh, distributed tracing, we are talking about metrics and logs as well. When you look at the whole Kubernetes cloud native you know, ecosystem, you know, there are certain things that we keep hearing again and again, cost is one, uh, complexity is one, you know, among others. So when it comes to observability, how these, these two things affect that? And if we can look at observability, kind of if we can look at the waves of observability, where do you see it is? Because cost is becoming very, very important, a lot of things, yeah. I had a talk uh, today, uh, uh, during observability today on um, how a, a company in Brazil reduced their, um, their, their, their uh, costs of observability by 80% by using tail sampling, right? Um, and, and so costs are definitely a big issue when it comes to uh, observability. A lot of the data that we collect, and especially tracing, they are not looked at, they are not act on, so they just stay there waiting to be flushed out, to be removed, to be deleted. So we are paying for that data for nothing, basically. Um, so it is one of the challenges that we have today, right? So the, um, how do we ensure that uh, we are 
extracting the most value of that tooling without paying a lot of money for that. So we have some techniques, uh, but we are still on, um, I would say, um, a couple of steps uh, uh, before reaching a, an optimal solution, which would be, in my opinion, uh, would be uh, still getting uh, enough data so that we can infer insights later as, uh, as in metrics, but uh, at the same time, we still need high, um, high cardinality data. We still need fine print data to pinpoint and to select in case of issues. So we're still there, we're still not perfect. Um, we're still in the phase where we collect way more than what we need. And um, I think a, we are advancing. So hopefully uh, we'll find a, we'll strike a good balance between um, the cost of uh, collecting and storing that data and the value they provide. What are the, some of the challenging use cases that you see? And uh, from Grafana's perspective, what kind of customer base or specific industries who, who you say, hey, they are, they are more prone to using open telemetry, or you're like, no, it is everywhere, just like Linux kernel and Kubernetes is everywhere. I guess the first point is, if you are happy with what you have today, and you don't need to switch to uh, open telemetry at all, uh, open telemetry is there um, to solve some pain points that people have concretely. And most of the people that I talk to, they, they are concerned about uh, being locked in, in a, into a, with a specific vendor. So um, that's one of the things that we are trying to help people with, with open telemetry, so they can adopt open telemetry to make it easier for them to switch vendors if they want. Uh, interesting use cases. Um, I saw a few use cases that are very nice, like a car company is building or getting telemetry data out of their car, sending to open telemetry collector uh, to then send to their backends. So the idea is they are having now um, open telemetry data coming out of their cars, and then we can analyze that on, on dashboards, like with, with, um, with our backends. Another case is on a restaurant chain um, in, in America where they are looking to adopting uh, open telemetry to get data from the edges. In that case, the restaurant would be the edges. Uh, so they would generate telemetry data there on, from those applications. Uh, they would then get data on local collectors in, on each restaurant and then send data outside. There are challenges for that. I mean, those are not typical use cases for the collector. So there are things like latency, uh, local data storage, resiliency, and things like that that um, we still need to get better uh, in open telemetry. But it's very refreshing and very encouraging to hear about those use cases. Um, and uh, that, that gives us um, the motivation to improve the collector even better. Let's look at the commercial angle of open telemetry from the point of view of Grafana Labs. I mean, open source is great, right, yes. but you need commercial <laughs> support, you know, Absolutely. because not everybody has the resources. Yeah. Somebody, they need a throat to talk. Yeah, so Grafana um, provides some, uh, some support for open telemetry, especially, so <laughs> we have so many things. Um, we have a project called Bela where we can um, instrument applications on, on machines without touching the code at all. So it's a, an eBPF-based instrumentation where we just run uh, Bela on a specific node, we select which processes to instrument, uh, and it starts instrumenting those services um, no matter the language they are in. Uh, that uh, exports tele OTLP telemetry data and uh, sends to Grafana Cloud. For instance, Grafana Cloud offers a, an OTLP endpoint. So if you have a collector that is already receiving um, um, telemetry data, you can export that to Grafana Cloud natively. Uh, and we can then uh, save that data in, in, in Grafana Cloud logs, metrics, and traces backed by low key memory and tempo. Um, we can uh, use the Grafana agent to get uh, better data or more opinionated way of getting data. So if you have a Prometheus to Prometheus kind of situation, you can use Grafana agent uh, to um, make that connection without doing IP conversion. So you don't need to convert uh, Prometheus to OTLP and then back to uh, Prometheus when sending data to Grafana Cloud. Um, so yeah, um, we have profiling is new. So we have Periscope at Grafana Labs and uh, the team behind uh, Periscope uh, were helping in um, uh, with the proposal for OTLP profiling, uh, which was, was merged uh, a, a, a couple of months ago. Uh, and that's a new type of support that we're having at Grafana Cloud as well. Excellent, you, you gave some glimpse, but I also want to talk about, you know, if you look at Grafana Labs, 
I mean, you cannot share a lot of things there in the pipeline, but you know, what should we expect this year? So for the future, we can, well, I can share. I mean, it's open source, <laughs> but we can share that um, we are working on better support for uh, metrics, for instance. So we are working hard with the upstream communities in Prometheus, for instance, on Prometheus V3, so that we have a first class citizen um, support for OTLP in Prometheus. Um, we are also working on better support for, for open telemetry data, the data model in Loki, so that people can send OTLP data to Loki and uh, still have the same benefits that Loki offers for low cardinality data. Right? So open OTLP is notoriously uh, good for high cardinality, so there, is a, 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 uh, there was a mismatch there, and we're working hard to um, make the best of the two roads there. So those are things that we're working on in the future. We have um, uh, client side instrumentation as well, so with Faro, with uh, application observability. Uh, so open telemetry is all around Grafana these days. Can you also talk about, you know, of course, it's open source project, but what kind of roadmap is there for open telemetry? Yeah, so um, I'm part of the governing board for open telemetry, and uh, we decided a few weeks ago <laughs> on the roadmap for, for the year, for 2024. Uh, we want to see a few things getting done there. So one, one of the things that we want is to make uh, the semantic conventions more stable. So we selected a few uh, semantic conventions that we believe that should be stabilized by the end of the year. And uh, so that should allow people to um, have better confidence in, when instrumenting um, uh, database connections or message queue and things like that. We're also, we should, we also having better uh, logging support, so OTLP logging support. Uh, so we don't have an API for logs, but we have log bridges. So our idea is to provide a log bridge for each language that we support, so that people can start generating OTLP uh, log natively on their applications. Uh, we should be having a collector v1 by the end of the year. Um, so we are working with the collector SIG to um, stabilize components and select which components we want to be part of a V1. Uh, we know that the collector is one of the biggest, uh, um, uh, the big, we, we see the biggest usage in open telemetry uh, with the collector. And uh, I think it is important to get it stable um, and ready for users to run in production officially. What does LLM, Gen AI, ChatGPT mean either for open telemetry or how OT and telemetry can help with those workloads? That's a great question. Um, I think it was a very strong message from the CNCF. Right? So all, every single keynote at the first day was about AI, ML, uh, LLMs, and uh, generative AI. And I think um, it reflects the moment that we are right now. I see, I see um, this, whole, this whole AI and generative AI um, involvement with uh, telemetry or observability both in, uh, so in two ways. So first is, we need to make sure that we have observable AI. We need to make sure that we understand how uh, AI or generative AI or LLMs, how they got into a specific decision, how they got into a specific answer. So because they're mostly non-deterministic, um, it is very hard to understand how they got there. And if the, the answer is wrong, if we saw a hallucination, then uh, we should be able to have the tooling, the observability tooling to understand where it went wrong. So I think this is one area where observability can help LLMs. So if you're building an LLM or if you're building generative AI tooling, uh, then make sure to include observability in it. Uh, we, I, I think it is only a matter of time for us to create uh, semantic conventions for uh, generative AI or LLMs as well. Um, and, but on, on the other hand of the question, I think we are going to see in the future um, more usage of uh, generative AI in connection with our current tooling. So we see already in Grafana, for instance, we can see that uh, we do automatic generation of uh, a draft for post-incident reviews based on, on data that we collected during the incident itself. Uh, but I see way more than that. I, th I see that uh, we may have in the future, or perhaps I'm, it's a dream, that uh, we can see AI helping us on code reviews when saying you should instrument this part of the code or you should instrument that part of the code. And perhaps even opening PRs against our code bases, including that instrumentation that it, it sees as essential that we may have missed. Um, and so there's so much, so much potential for AI. We can use AI perhaps to generate um, uh, data for us, like telemetry data 
for uh, academic, uh, academic purposes, right? So one of the biggest problems in research is that we don't have a good data set for tracing. So perhaps we can use generative AI to generate telemetry data for research purposes. So, so many things that we can explore and I think it's just the beginning. Jurasi, thank you so much for taking time out today. Talk about open telemetry, Grafana Labs, the whole ecosystem, the evolution. Thanks for great insights there. And I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me.